Good morning everyone. Today I got started a little later because I'm a workaholic. My wife had the day off today so we went and had breakfast and that's that's the thing I struggle with the most in business is making time for family and stuff outside of business. I'm a workaholic. Everyone around me will agree to that that I'm always working and that's both to my benefit and my downfall. You know it hurts personal relationships makes me excel in business so you know I'm gonna be trying to work on that as much as I can over the next years you know year two years something like that just to make sure I am taking time away because I do realize doing the daily vlog only entrenches the must work thing more like I have to get content out even more so than I was so uh, you know I want to make sure I take you know breakfast with my wife stuff like that seriously so that's what I did it's almost it's like 11:30 right now so getting started a little late even though I got up at 8 a.m answer a bunch of questions and uh, comments stuff like that but let me show you what I got going on and what we're gonna do today so first thing you know we had to get up early not that 8 a.m. is that early but I had to be ready for the uh, fence people to install a fence which is nice this is part of the business I had this gate put in so that I could get rid of my rinky-dink gate that was holding my dogs back but if I'm gonna be driving to and from the fish room like every day at this point this thing the way it works is just so, you know, it's got these little things that come apart and this would take 10 minutes every day coming and going to get this done. So now I can, you know, we had this gate put in and we'll be able to just swing it once it sets. You know, we ran a snafu here of when they drilled down, I don't know, I don't know if drilled down is the right word, whenever, basically when they went to set this post, um, the foundation of the house came out to like here. So they had to delay it by a day, take this post and weld it so that it had a curve, you know? So basically, you know, it kind of, it gets set in the ground, then it has to come over, then it has to come up. So that way it's tight against the house. And uh, so yeah, gotta let that set. That's why the gate's not closed now. It's gotta set for at least a day before we can let the gate be up against it. And uh, yeah, so that's the first thing I got done, you know? And that's just for me showing you guys uh, you know every part of the business people don't think about that kind of stuff a lot where it's you know even a, a gate and a, a very expensive stupid expensive gate by the way because it's like a, a 17 foot wide span right here so uh, they actually don't even make a gate big enough so this is a 13 foot gate and then we have this area here that uh, you know, has to fill in otherwise so you know that's all just part of the part of the business you know and uh, you know it's hard to justify because man paying that kind of money just to save myself 20 minutes every day and the thing is it, it saves me way more than 20 minutes because it'll be the difference between me driving back there and not driving back there and carrying wet stuff through the house stuff like that so anyway uh, let's go into the fish room and let's talk about where we're gonna get started well before I fix that other drain I'm gonna be fixing this one apparently there's water on the floor and uh, I'm, I'm fairly confident I've identified why it's happening. I believe, you know, I've been noticing that the flow between two pumps, so when I put this wall on a pump and this wall on a pump, I'm now using two pumps, right? I think those two pumps in conjunction can overwhelm that system, the drain system I have, if I have water coming in from my other totes as well. So what I need to do is I need to spend some time and make sure I stagger all of them. So it means I probably need another timer so I can have each of those pumps go at different times. And then I want to make sure it's staggered enough with the auto water change on the totes as well. So I got to do all of those things so that instead of having up to three drains draining at one time, I just have only one ever. And I think that'll fix the problem. But for now, I gotta grab a shop vac and vacuum it up. And here we go. Well, there we go. Perfect start to a day, cleaning up water. But that's what happens when you make changes. That's why I always say never make a change before you go on vacation, because this is gonna be fine for like a couple of days. And now I found where the kink in the system is, now I gotta fix it. So I just discovered something interesting. Um, with the sub pump, so I'm out you know, draining the vacuum from just getting all that water, and I come out here, and this thing's just been flowing at this rate for like 
five, ten minutes, I swear. Like, I've been looking down here going, okay, yeah, some water, because we just ran the stump pump. It's going into my, my uh, yard. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that seems legit. But the pump hasn't run for, like, ten minutes. So what it is doing, even though it's crazy, so let me show you the system. It comes out, goes through the wall, and it is this pipe right here, goes to the ceiling, goes all the way down to the other end, and then we go all the way down over to here into this room, and then we go down, we come down here, we go there, that's a check valve, all the way to there, right? It is create so what's happening, I think, is that when that pump kicks on, it puts so much momentum through this pipe that it creates a suction. And so what's happening, I believe, is that even though the pump turns off, it got such a siphon going down where it comes down outside here that it's continuing to pull water there. Now, that would be okay, except I don't want it to do that. And so, you know, now it has stopped because we heard it starting to gurgle. And so it finally broke the siphon. What happened was the water level got down low enough, it broke the siphon, and then, um, then it stopped sucking water out from there. But, you know, that sump pump is meant to be the backup so that when the water starts flowing too hard, it, like if we were to overwhelm that drain, it would pump it out. Clearly it failed. Like, so I don't know, I mean, it's kind of a big pump. Maybe I need to go for a smaller pump. Maybe I need to get a better float switch. Maybe that's what I'm gonna look into. I'm probably gonna, you know, I know that I think uh, Waro Joey King of DIY just did a video on that. So maybe I'll look at that video and see if there's either something I compar comparable to just buy real cheap or make one myself. But I'm not happy with the way this pump is performing currently. Like, cleaning up water off the ground is one thing. Like, that sucks. But then, on top of that, it not working the way I want it to, that makes me a little sketchy. So, the other thing I want to do today, you know, as I'm walking around getting all this stuff out of here, all getting all the water out, I'm like, this is a train wreck. You know, getting that uh, shop back over here was a train wreck. So I need to clean this up. Like, this is yesterday's mess, right? Like, I put lights up and do all those things, but I need to work on that, too. And so maybe I'll do that before I fix a drain. Maybe I'm gonna put some goldfish in some of these tanks. Like I need to, I need to work on stuff and stuff is what I'm gonna do. Time for cleanup. Starting this 40 gallon, just four fish in here, auto water changes, and I need to get some crushed coral and I want to get some uh, substrate in there for them to mull around in. But you can see here we still have some fin issues from shipping that need to heal out. You know, he's got a notch in his fin. Uh, that's a Ryukin right there, the orange one. And then we've got that is an ingot uh, Aranda. It's kind of like an olive color, which is kind of really cool. And then look at this like blue 
Ryukin. The thing's awesome. Like, I don't want to let that one go. And then here we've got a Black Ranchu. Next tank over, we've got another Inga Aranda. We've got a Black Ranchu there. Nice darker color than the other one. Uh, and then we've got this Calico Ryukin. You know, kind of some copper colors in there. And then we have the red and white Ryukin right here. So that's how I'll probably do the uh, selling of these fish. So these are all distinct fish, right? So we've got like a red and white, uh, or a gold and white Ingot Aranda, a red and white Ryukin, a black Ranchu, and a Calico Ryukin. So they'll get listed on the tank, we'll shoot videos, and you'll buy the individual fish. Now it doesn't work if I have four black ranchers in here. I can't guarantee I'd kept the right one, so I gotta be careful when I do that kind of stuff. So I thought I might start a new thing, being that I show you feeding the fish room, maybe I'll show you what I'm feeding also, because that's one of the most asked questions, like what should I feed this, what should I feed that? So today, pretty much everything in this room is gonna get, you know, Hikari frozen brine shrimp. I like it because uh, it helps clear fish out. So the shells work as a laxative, I can feed it to the goldfish, I can feed it to the African cichlids, I can feed it to the angels, I can feed it to the corys, I can feed it to guppies and platies. I can't think of a fish in here actually that can't get it. Maybe the baby convicts, gotta put a little bit of small food in there, but otherwise, pretty much everything's gonna chow down on this, so that's what I'm gonna do. Just a by the way, uh, package number two, that's how much I believe in feeding good food is that it costs me quite a bit when you're feeding out a couple whole packages a day, but I swear it translates to growth, healthier fish, better color, and I'm not willing to give up on any of those. So that's why my fish are gonna cost more to my customers at the store and stuff like that, but I'm not willing to compromise quality for myself or for my customers, so back to feeding. And just like that, we're done for the day. It's only like four or something, but I got a lot of stuff. I'm working on a lot of graphs, if you guys haven't noticed that. And I've got a lot of online stuff to do. So that's all I'm gonna get done in the fish room. So we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.